Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, our next edition of a podcast. In today's edition, we're going to be talking about the recent announcement on uh, January the 13th uh, from Gavin Williamson, the Secretary of State for Education, uh, about what it means for your GCSEs, uh, your mock grades, and what it means for remote learning and for you year 11s going forward this year. So today with me, I've got Ms. Wilson. Hello. Hello. Hi there. I've got uh, Miss Danaha. Hello. Hi there. And I've got uh, Miss Hopkins. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So we've got an awful lot to discuss today. And I think it's really important that we get into this quite uh, lengthy announcement and update that we had yesterday and try and unpick it uh, and help our students understand things uh, a little bit more. So Miss Wilson, can I come to you first for maybe a, a general summary or a roundup of, of what uh, Gavin uh, told us yesterday? Yeah, so um, in the letter he wrote to um, the chief regulator at Ofqual, and Ofqual are the people who decide um, what means of assessment we're going to be using this year. He's basically confirmed that, that there will be no exams um, as, as we know them um, this summer for all qualifications. Um, so that includes um, the iMedia that we do, for example, which is classes of vocational. Uh, qualification. He's basically saying that there's going to be a consultation over the next two weeks, which um, will include um, asking lots of people involved in education what we should do in terms of assessment. He, he seems keen that um, it should be teacher assessment, although what that looks like, again, is, you know, people have got to decide on. Uh, but he's looking at ex what he he calls externally set tasks or papers. So it, 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 there does seem to be there is going to be I think um, some co some kind of external externally set assessment. So whether that that's not going to be a full exam, but it might be sort of a mini test or a test that is set by uh, the, the exam board uh, administered by by schools. But it will be much shorter than an exam. And who is going to mark that? You know. It could be other teachers in other schools, for example, not necessarily the teachers marking their own students' papers. Um, or again, it could go back to exam boards. But I think the other point he makes is that he wants students to have as much time as possible uh, studying and um, completing their courses before these grades are submitted. So it's, um, yeah, you know, it's not like we're going to be doing this next week. Okay, so if I put that question to you, Ms. Dan, I, if I read you the statement then, he says... Um, that it is his view that final teacher judgment on students' grade ought to be as late as possible in the academic year to maximise remaining teaching time and ensure students are motivated to remain engaged in education. So he hasn't told us when, but when would you guess that that might like to might be then? Well, I think the examinations will continually take place, won't they, in, in various forms for as long as they can. We want to try and get as much evidence from students, both from, from live lessons, from classwork and from mini assessments, leading up to perhaps some kind of final um, mini assessment, as you said, but as late as possible so that we can take all the evidence into account. So, Miss Hopkins, do you remember um, before he'd uh, given the grace of an extra three weeks, hadn't he, mm -hmm. on the GCSEs? Do you think that that might still stand now for that final assessment grade? I, I expect it to because if the uh, examiners aren't going to have to do as much work as they normally would, then the time bef between completing the exams and the results being released, that time can be shorter. So where we normally finish exams mid-June, they can quite easily push that back because the processing time, the admin time in between is less. So what I would say sort of end of June easily. End of June, possibly of June. even going into July, maybe for the final, final grade uh, yeah. to be submitted, possibly. Yeah, and because um, normally they do A-level first and then GCSE, so when we see a release about A-levels, maybe we can know that we're just, we normally follow by about two or three weeks, so. Mm. Again, that might be, so that might be the teacher assessment grade that goes in then, mm -hmm. because if they're gonna do these mini tests, when will they happen? Because if they're going to be marked by the exam boards, which we don't know yet, that's yeah. going to have to be marked and come back to us 
as a teacher to say, right, well, I've got this grade now, but I'm going to take into account the other parts of assessments that I've got on this, these students, and then I'm going to submit the overall grade. Unless they are saying that the mini test will be the actual final grade. You know, we don't know yet, do we? Well, he says here, Miss Wilson, he says a breadth of evidence should mm. inform teachers' judgments and the provision of training and guidance will support teachers to reach their assessment of the student's deserved grade. This should be drawn out in the consultation, which is what you mentioned earlier. And then he goes on to say he wants to explore the possibility of providing externally set papers. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think he's leading on the fact that he's saying a breadth of evidence. So that final grade in the test, if it runs, I cannot see that being the overall grade, but I do think it would be a strong indicating factor in that final grade, wouldn't it? Much like an exam is in the summer anyway. You know, people do have good exams and bad exams sometimes anyway as a, as a normal normal examination season, I suppose. Yeah, I do think it's going to include a variety of assessment, which we will have to be doing as students are at home, definitely. So we'll be having to set what, what we would call, you know, significant pieces of work assessments that students will submit and then be marked according to exam criteria. But I think that's what's going on in most subjects already mm. anyway. I do want to, um, I am pleased that um, I think they're not going to be using any kind of algorithm this year. Yeah, to... Miss Hopkins, can I come to you on the algorithm? What, what was that last year? Uh, what does it mean? And uh, what does it, why is that good news that we won't be using it this year? Well, an algorithm is like a mathematical formula that they apply to data so that they can try and um, even out any problems that they see or just they try to make it fair. Uh, so it's looking at the highest and the lowest and then taking out anomalies and, and then trying to get the spread of results fair. But it's such a complicated thing to do that I think they realistically didn't do it very well last year which is why they in the end took it away um so uh, yeah an algorithm is just like a, a formula to process the results um and it it had such a sort of detrimental effect on last year's results that they just in the end took it away because it, it hadn't worked so this year it's much more putting the faith in the the teachers and their experience and their professionalism to be able to assess where the pupils are at okay so on that then um Ms. Danaha, you've, you've done many roles in teaching, I know, before you were head of department, and it said here about, um, and there should also be external checks in place to support the fairness and consistency of, uh, of grades between institutions. That basically reads to me like moderation. What sort of experience have you had with moderation uh, with, with things that you've done before? Yeah, well, we're very lucky at Dalton Academy. We have, uh, you know, um, Schools like Washwood Heath, very close by, that we can moderate our results, um, particularly where schools do the same exam boards as us, uh, for example, uh, RE and History. We can quite easily get heads of department together, look at our results and moderate them. We've got lots of expert examiners at all of our schools across the match. It might even be a case where we are able to get someone from the exam board in to various schools or, or maths as a whole to look at our results just to do that, that extra check for us. So it is opening the door, I suppose, to, we have this in some subjects anyway, where we submit grades and they go off to be moderated and sometimes they do go up and down. Uh, it is opening that door, I suppose, for what our grade that we submit may not be the final grade that the student actually receives. Well, I think in most cases with moderation, it's about justifying the result that you've given the student. So it's just that final extra check, really, so you justify to yourself and other people why that particular student deserves the grade that you was given them. It's very okay, so moderation that grades will go down. Yeah, so actually that's a really good word. So he goes on to say changes should only be made to grades if they cannot be justified. So what type of things would you expect uh, a teacher to have to be able to justify a grade? I think all sorts of evidence like previous classwork, previous data, current data, attitudes, behaviour for learning, um, the, um, what we know about that, that particular student and how much they, they want to revise because they ask for extra work. It's also their own uh, resilience, if you like, and determination of that child. And the teachers will know whether that child prior to the real exam, if they were, if, if they had taken place, whether they would have done that extra revision that is needed. Mm. So what do you think that ultimately means for our Year 11s listening now, Miss Wilson? What, what, what actions can they, they take 
uh, in the immediate sense based on what we've learned so far? So we've talked, we've told the year 11, haven't we? We expect them to participate really well in their in their remote learning, and we know that remote learning can take various forms. So we expect them to be participating in their online um, live lessons. We expect them to be. So when I say participating, you know, where where appropriate and where they are, they feel confident to to put, you know, to unmute themselves and involve themselves in the discussion. But just to make, you know, if they're not comfortable with that, maintaining their uh, presence with the teacher so that, you know, unmuting and speaking isn't the only way to show the teacher that you are actually, you know, engaging and working hard. Ultimately, um, certainly for year 11, most lessons have assignments attached to them. So ultimately, it's about the work that you produce, isn't it? And the teacher will be able to see that you've been listening um, to the lesson and what's going on and, uh, and you're able to show that in your work. And because um, although, like Mr. Sun has just said, attitude and resilience um, um, and revision in pre for previous assessments will come will be taken into account. Ultimately, if we have to justify why we've given a student a grade, we're going to be looking at pieces of work that they've actually completed, aren't we? Yeah. So, Miss Hopkins, you've just been working uh, now on uh, the tools that we can we can gather that evidence through Microsoft Teams. What does that look like for students? Then, will they notice anything different? What does that What does that mean? But for them on Teams, um, I, it's a, a little app called Insights. They, I don't think they will even see it on their team homepage at all, but it means that we can see uh, what meet, it's called a meeting in Teams. So what meetings they've attended, in other words, what lessons they've attended, how long they were in the meeting for. Uh, so I know some people have problems with their Wi-Fi and you can see it becomes up like a little bar on the screen and it's, it's a, you can see where their Wi-Fi is dropped and they've come back on. So you can see that they were in for five minutes, out back in again for five minutes. So it, we can very clearly see their participation online of are they in the lessons or are they not in the lessons? And then it tells you about the assignments that they've viewed. So when they do an assignment, we can see have they looked at it and then we get the message that it's been viewed. Have they completed it? And that's when they hand it in. Or I think the uh, phrase is turning. It's like an American phrase. Have you turned in your work? And then we can look at that, write a comment, and then we return it to them. So that's that's the equivalent of us marking their work and giving it back to them or giving them some sort of feedback, even if it's thanks very much. Well done. Thanks for attending the lesson. You know, they will get some sort of feedback, not on every assignment because it's not possible. But for us to see what they're doing, it's about the assignments and it's about the participation. And then obviously the, the chat, when they're chatting, um, even if they're just answering a question or putting ABCD, that chat uh, is then saved in the posts. So we can go back into a post from any lesson into a chat from any lesson and see how they've participated um i think that's a, a bit more nitty-gritty but definitely the insights is attendance and uh, submission Assignment. assignments yeah okay so for our students out there that that realistically that engagement with the online work is the only thing um that realistically they can get get started and we're confident aren't we that all of our teachers are doing that work for five lessons a day and year 11s as well shouldn't see that um as the, as the minimum, should they miss down harm? You, what, what are your mentor team sort of doing and working on preparing them for the, for the summer? What would you advise for a year 11 to be doing? Yeah, well, mentors can give them um, some advice uh, as well as getting them uh, careers information and um, meetings with the careers, uh, the careers ladies that we work with. Uh, mentors can give them advice about where to access additional information. Mentors can contact teachers on their behalf uh, if they need things. Um, they're sent to them, extra vision, extra guidance, all the information maybe that they're not sure about who to ask, they can go to their mentors for their particular houses. Uh, at the moment, for Farrah and Shakespeare, that is Miss Holder. Uh, for Cadbury, that is Miss Holmes. We then have uh, Turing, that is Miss Nazir. And then we have Mr. Tarrick, who is for Alizam and Curie. If you can't get in touch with a mentor, you can get in touch with myself as well. Uh, and you can do that through email, uh, see Danaher at salty.academy. All right, thank you, that's brilliant. So, um, Ms. Danaher has mentioned uh, careers and advice there. And I know one of the big topics uh, for discussion this week, following on from the uh, assembly that Mr. Hussaini did, is about colleges 
and college reference and applications. So, um, Ms. Hopkins, with this announcement yesterday and what we've just discussed, what, what does this mean for college references and, and importantly, uh, predicted grades? Um, well, we've been looking at the predicted grades because obviously we did those sort of end of November, beginning of December. So we are using those on the references that we are sending to colleges. And we've just put um, a, a statement on there to say that these were done at the beginning of December, that they're aspirational because we want the pupils to aspire to, you know, courses that they are um, going to challenge them at, at post 16 but also that these grades can go up or down depending on the pupils attitude and performance over the next few months so yes predicted grades are on there for the colleges the colleges just really want to know is the pupil suitable for the course that they're applying for so the the main thing is the sort of ballpark area rather than the specific grade um, but yeah just that predicted grades are going on the college references. We get requests from the colleges and then we will send those across to the colleges. Um, so people- They're not any guarantee, to... sorry, sorry, Ms. Hopkins. They're not any guarantee, are they, of the grade that the student's going to get? No, definitely not. It's, it's more a case of us being able to inform the college of the grade that you were working, working at and that we hoped you would get in the summer based on where you were at the end of November, based on your year 11 attitude and attendance and performance. But yeah, th there's no way we can say that that's definitely what we're going to be putting forward for you as a, a grade in, in the summer, because it was done, you know, already it's a month old, that data. So it's definitely no, yeah, no guarantee whatsoever of, of what's going to happen in the summer. So on, on that data, then, it is, it is very difficult for us teachers to be able to get that right. And we have planned, haven't we, Miss Wilson, a set of mock exams for the week beginning the 25th of January. Um, do we have an update on that? We had. And I was hoping, I was really hoping that um, by then we could look at even if it was getting small groups or students by house to come in and sit some assessments. Um, that that would be possible. But um, given the current situation of the pandemic in in this area and in the country, I really don't think that is the safest option. So unfortunately, yeah, we're not going to be able to go ahead with um, the mock exams as they as they were going to be in school, certainly. So we'll be carrying on with um, subject setting assessed pieces of work um, through remote learning as we're doing at the moment. And then as soon as um, the government allows us to start uh, reintegrating students back into school, obviously year 11 will be our priority. And as soon as it's safe to do so, we will be inviting year 11s to come in, um, you know, and sit assessments in whatever form they are, they look like uh, in terms of our own internal assessments. Um, as soon as that happens so there won't be so students need to be ready as soon as the government says right children can come back to school we'll be coming back in and they'll be sitting some level of assessment i would say so it's really really important that they continue with their remote learning in each of their subjects so that they are ready when that time comes so the government have been quite clear haven't they up until this point that they are always prioritizing exam groups so we know that we're definitely off until the february half term and if we are allowed to open, we are all quite certain that the first group of pupils in through the door will be year 11s, won't, won't we? Yeah. Um, with that in mind then, um, you said that we'll be doing some assessments when we get back to school. Um, we'll find the balance, won't we, between teaching and doing some assessments and then they will all fall into uh, the final grade. So. Um, what does that mean then for a predicted grade that Miss Hopkins just said that there is one ready to be released for a college? So will that predicted grade change over, throughout the year? So, um, like Miss Hopkins said, so uh, pre predicted grade or college references are sent usually from now on by us to the colleges. So if there is a, a particular circumstance where a student was hoping to um, be accepted onto a course or looking to do a course but they need a higher grade than what we originally predicted um, you know they they should then contact uh, Miss Danahar or Miss Hopkins to ask for a revised predicted predicted grades for those subjects because we will as soon as we start getting more assessments in um, completed by the students whether that's whether that's remotely or once we return to school 
we can then use that data to upgrade those predicted grades. Okay. Um, Ms. Danahan, in, the, in September, we, we went through a bit of a change for Year 11s by reducing down some of the subjects um, that we did because we were worried that it was going to put too much pressure on students, particularly if there was another lockdown. And lo and behold, here we are. Uh, but some students uh, continued with some subjects outside of school. Uh, particularly, I noticed in triple science for you, Miss Hopkins, or perhaps uh, child development. Um, Miss Danaher, what, what advice is out there for those students that are seeking to carry on with that additional subject, but they won't necessarily find that subject in their five period day because it isn't technically on their timetable? Yeah, well, um, from, uh, from the teachers that I've spoken to, all teachers are really happy to keep going ahead with those. Uh, many teachers, like Miss Hopkins, like you just said, are scheduling those lessons for after hours as they would be in normal school time. So your calendar by no means, if you want to continue with a subject finishes at 2.30, you must keep looking at your calendar, looking at your emails from your teachers, contact me and the mentors and find out how you can pursue that subject because we fully intend to go ahead with them. Okay, thank you. Miss Hopkins, a word on triple science? Yeah, just to say that it, it will obviously be continuing. Um, I think I'm going to try and put together a bit like what Miss Wilson does for the Spanish lesson. So it's a pre-recorded lesson that they can dip into when they want. And I'm going to do them on the different topics as, we, as we're going through. At the moment, chemistry, we'll be doing ex the extra chemistry bits as extra little sort of lessons for them to dip into. And it will all be on Teams. So, and, th and they know to contact me if they need anything anyway. So, yeah, definitely continuing with the triple. Okay, thank you. So we are running out of time. So the, the only things that I wanted to just perhaps uh, tie up then is, Miss Wilson, you mentioned at the start uh, that there's a consultation. What that means is that the government are seeking the input, aren't they, from schools, from head teachers, from exam boards and people over the next couple of weeks to finalise what the actual plan would be. So what we've discussed at the moment uh, are our sort of opinions and thoughts on what's released. Uh, but actually the final decisions are, are still probably a couple of weeks away, aren't they? Yes, definitely. We look, we look forward to hearing about those decisions okay. and then making our own plans. Yes, indeed. All right, well, it just leaves me then to uh, thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Hopkins, Ms. Danaha and Ms. Wilson for your input today. As soon as we have more, we'll be doing uh, another podcast. Okay, so students, um, take care. Um, thank you for listening. <laughs>